Hello, today I want to talk about how Elon Musk rescued two astronauts from outer space. This sounds like the title of a superhero science fiction movie, but it happened in real life. Elon Musk just rescued two astronauts who were stranded in outer space. We have, all of us have the utmost respect for Mr. Musk and obviously respect and admiration for our president of the United States. Uh, Donald Trump, we appreciate them, we appreciate all that they do for us, for human spaceflight, for our nation. Um, and, and we're thankful that they are in the positions they're in. Well, I'm actually usually a little nervous about uh, these uh, returns, because uh, there's always some risk that something could go wrong. But uh, thanks to the excellent work of the SpaceX team working with NASA, uh, the, sa the, the astronauts are now safely home. And um, so congratulations to the SpaceX NASA teams on excellent work um, and uh, a huge uh, note of appreciation to President Trump for uh, prioritizing and expediting their return. So let me give you some background story. You may or may not know that Elon Musk was one of the co-founders of PayPal and on October of 2002 PayPal was sold to eBay and Elon Musk got $180 million for this transaction. At, at this time, as a young man, he could have retired and go to Mexico and drink margaritas for the rest of his life, but no, he felt that he had way a lot more to give to society. So he took his $180 million and out of that he took $100 million to invest in SpaceX, the rocket company, and his ambition was to go to Mars with this rocket company. So to keep track of the timeline, he got that money from PayPal on 2002 and on 2006 he already had his first rocket, Falcon 1. And this rocket, it failed three times. That means they created the rocket, sent it out into space and it exploded three times until finally on 2008, six years later, that rocket managed to succeed and go into space. You have been the chief engineer of SpaceX and remain the chief engineer of SpaceX. It is the first private company to ever make it to orbit. Walk us through the beginnings of that. It is not, um, it's something that nobody else has been able to accomplish. Well, that's, it's quite a long story. Uh, and there are some books that have been written about it. Uh, but uh, in the beginning, I, we didn't actually know anything about rockets. Uh, so our first three missions failed, actually, of our Falcon 1 rocket. And... Uh, uh, we almost ran out of money and just barely made it with the fourth launch. If the fourth launch of Falcon 1 had not succeeded, we would have failed as a company. So we just barely made it. Um, so I have to say that uh, I was not a very good chief engineer in the beginning, but uh, I did learn over time. Um, and uh, I think we've gotten at this point to where the, the vehicle is very reliable. At the beginning, Elon Musk didn't know anything about rockets. And what he did is that he went to Russia to buy one of the rockets that Russia have used to go into space for in the past. However, because he was so young, he was only 30 years old, the Russians practically laughed at him. And they knew that he had a lot of money from the sale of PayPal and tried to ask for a, an outrageous price for their old technology rockets. Now, Elon Musk didn't take that bait and he thought that he could build a rocket for less money than the Russians were asking for, for their rockets. So he decided to build his own rockets. Now, the incredible thing is that Elon Musk didn't know anything about how to build a rocket. So guess what he did? He decided to teach himself. When Elon started SpaceX, he didn't know a thing about rockets, but that didn't stop him. He hired people who were smarter than him. People like Jim Cantrell, a former NASA engineer, and Tom Muller, a rocket engine designer. He was figuring out rocket science as he went. Through books and questions, he became a self-taught rocket scientist. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, uh, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. Um, and then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. You're self-taught? Yeah. Like we all have the ability to teach ourselves things that we want to learn. Anyways, he read a lot of books, he asked a lot of questions, and we think 
Within six years, he had the first privately developed liquid fuel rocket to reach into orbit. So in six years, he went from zero to having this company that was the first private owned company sending rocket into space. That is amazing. Today, Elon Musk is doing something that no other person or institution can do in the world. He's using reusable rockets, okay? So Musk had not only done something that it was previously thought that only the governments of superpowers could do, he had done things that it, they thought they couldn't do, that no one could do. Robert Zubrin, author of The Case for Space, points out that private companies now do what NASA couldn't even imagine doing send people into space affordably. This is the potential of free enterprise. So this is something that the U.S. government cannot do by themselves. Uh, the Chinese government cannot do. The Russians cannot do it. Elon Musk is the only person in the world with his capital that has managed to do that. And he is he's able to build rockets at one tenth of the price that the U.S. government can do and a one-third of the time. One Musk innovation was reusable rocket boosters. For years, NASA dropped theirs into the ocean. Why would they throw it away? Because that's the way it's always been done. But Musk thought... If you had to get a new plane every time you flew somewhere, very few people could afford to fly. So he found a way to have them land safely so they can be used again. Imagine that his rockets. Yes, if a rocket if built by the United States costs a hundred million dollars, he can build a rocket for ten million dollars. This is just extraordinary. So, how is this possible? You may ask, and I was asking myself the same thing. Well, for one thing, when NASA or the U.S. government is building a rocket. They don't care about the cost. Why they don't care? Because it's not their money. It's the taxpayers' money. So the people who are building it, it is we see in their interest to charge as much money as possible. The structure is all messed up. NASA pays contractors' development costs and then adds 10% profit. The more projects cost, the bigger the contractors' profit. You have good people engaged in cost maximization because you just gave them incentive to do that. <laughs> We have not been good at maintaining schedule, and we have not been good at maintaining costs. And, they, and the Congress people who are approving these rockets, they're saying, yes, I approve all that cost as long as some of the production is done within my district. Costly was okay with NASA, as long as spaceships were assembled in many congressmen's districts. In some ways, NASA is a very large job program. Aerospace lawyer James Dunstan. By spreading its centers across the country, NASA can get more support from more different congressmen. The current request calls for more than $21 billion. We'll welcome you back to Texas and spend lots of money anytime. <laughs> so imagine, I don't know, 20 congresspersons saying, yes, I approve that, but you have to build this part in my district. And another one saying, yes, I approve of that as long as this other is built within my district. And that creates a whole bunch of inefficiency. Imagine building a part here, a part there, and then bringing it together to build it here. What well, Elon Musk can create every in his little corner of the universe. Possible. While Elon Musk, which is a capitalist, he's looking for efficiency. He's looking for how to reduce cost. He's not looking for how to increase cost. He's looking the inverse. How can I reduce cost? Now, let's go back to our story of how these two astronauts were drifting out in space. Well, what happened is that in June 2024, last year, NASA sent two astronauts to the International Space Station to do some research, laboratory, some scientific research. And what happened is that the vehicle that they used to send this astronaut into outer space was a Boeing Starliner aircraft. Now, the thing about this airliner is that uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX 
X submitted a much lower bid, but President Biden and the previous administration, they don't like Elon Musk. So they de decided to give the contract to Boeing, which was less efficient and it was charging more money. Well, what happened is that the, the vehicle couldn't come back to Earth because it has thruster, malfunction, and helium leaks. So for a mission that these two astronauts were supposed to spend in space in space about eight days they ended up spending about nine months so now regrettably these two astronauts are stuck in space okay and there's nobody else who can go and bail them out rescue them other than elon musk but president biden decides not to ask for elon musk help because they are political enemies and elon musk is backing president trump so biden doesn't want elon musk to look like a hero like he is so he decides to leave these two astronauts stranded in the space to see what happens right i just want to clarify on the issue of, of whether or not you had offered uh, to send this this rocket to space to rescue these astronauts sooner to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Um, I heard somebody earlier today say, in fact, that didn't happen when I believe it did. No, it, it, we, we definitely offered to return the astronauts earlier. Uh, that's there's no question about that. The astronauts were only supposed to be there for for eight days and they've been there for almost 10 months. Uh, so obviously that doesn't make any sense. Uh, SpaceX could have brought the astronauts back uh, after a few months at most. And uh, we made that offer to the Biden administration. It was rejected for, uh, for political reasons. And that's just a fact. And then, of course, he loses the election. And President Trump promised that if he wins the election, he will send Elon Musk to rescue these astronauts. And that's exactly what he did. As soon as uh, uh, President Trump won the election, he asked Elon Musk, hey, Mr. Elon Musk, could you go and pick up these astronauts in space? So when I came in office, I said, Elon, we got to get them out. Do you have a rocket ship handy? How many people have a rocket? And Biden left them up. He abandoned them. You know, we could have done this sooner. But Biden didn't want to because he was embarrassed by what happened. So they were up there. They were supposed to be there for a few days. They were there for many months. And now they're coming back. But think of it. Elon's able to do that with his genius. And you have people that hate it. And I really believe these are people that hate our country. And Elon Musk, as a good patriot, he says, yes, of course, I will. And that's what happened. Then Elon Musk sent this, this Dragon spaceship, pick up the two astronauts, and voila, they are back in, in Earth. Absolutely. Elon Musk saved the U.S. space program. If it wasn't for Elon Musk, we would not be able to fly U.S. astronauts from U.S. soil to the International Space Station. Make no that is no doubt about it. We stopped flying astronauts on space shuttle in 2011. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue deployment right now. Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And splash down, crew nine back on Earth. <laughs> And there you have it. The side hatch is open for the first time since September. Oh, it looks like we're getting our next crew member here. That is none other than Sonny Williams. Big smile, big waves. And of course, that leaves NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore. And, you know, I'm so happy to live in a time where I can see these things happening. I can see spaceships going back and forth to space and I, I just I just live in amazement. So that's all for me for today. Thank you so much for watching and until soon. Peace.